Yellowstone has recently seen a swarm of 200 earthquakes, and here's what that means. This is on Live Science by Tia Ghosh, Associate Editor. A swarm of 200 earthquakes hits Yellowstone. What does that mean? It struck the National Park in just two weeks, but that probably doesn't mean the big one is coming anytime soon, according to geologists from the park. The 200 tremblers began February 8th, okay? And it ramped up February 15th in an area about eight miles northwest of West Yellowstone and Montana, according to U.S. Geological Survey. So uh, this was just about the time where we were really increasing the reporting on this, and I'm going to do another video now, after this one, um, looking at what, what the uh, earthquake strikes were, where they were. It's not just Yellowstone, it's also going down all the way down towards like a tangent from northeast to southwest, going down towards the Pisgah Crater, the Lavic Field area, just south of the Long Valley Caldera. There's a lot of activity there in those dormant volcanoes and cinder cones. Even the Salton Buttes are acting up with earthquake swarms. Now, um, and they have deformation, degassing. There's also uh, uh, fissures and uh, geysers there as well. Now, in the Salton Buttes, we have mud pots. Now, 200 tremblers began February 8th, ramping up February 15th in an area eight miles northwest of West Yellowstone, Montana. So this is the official USGS report saying this. In reality, many more tiny quakes hit the region, hundreds of them every day, but were simply too small for the seismometers to pick up, pick them up according to USGS. Well, they have very sensitive seismometers. We have the UNIVAC that you'll see in the, one of the uh, uh, first videos that I posted today, um, where Ben Ferry, you'll explain what is a split of your hair. I mean, less than that. So they could pick up tiny changes. Now, this is a map from the University of Utah, but uh, we have better maps to look at later on. I'll just keep this here for you. This is, of course, uh, all right, quake swarms over this Montana. Must be, this must be, uh, we can't go any further than that. Let's have it like that so you can see bigger. All right. So, uh, yes, they do have the uh, very, very sensitive monitors that they use, and they have them all over the place and tracking them. So there are a, a lot few that are a lot less that are reported than the ones that are recorded, obviously. Now, while the swarm is bigger than the everyday seismicity in the park, it's not a sign of a major quake, said Michael Poland. He's the scientist in charge of the USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory in Vancouver, Washington. Quote, this is what Yellowstone does. This is what Yellowstone, this is Yellowstone being Yellowstone. In other words, it's just normal. Poland told Life Science, all experience, experiences, uh, uh, it experiences swarms all the time. In fact, the same area saw an even l bigger, larger swarm between June and September of 2017, when 2,400 tremblers hit the same approximate region. The current swarm may actually be the continuation of that earlier swarm, Poland explains. Earthquake swarms, an earthquake swarm, is usually defined as a higher than average number of earthquakes striking an area over a relatively short period of time, typically without a single main shock. According to the University of Utah seismograph stations, which measure seismic activity in Yellowstone National Park, as this is one of the things that we have, this is Utah here, reporting this one. Um, now swarms, as we said, uh, typically have two ultimate causes, shifting at major tectonic plates or movements of water or gas or magma under the surface. As the abundance of hot springs and mud pots reveals, Yellowstone has plenty of fluid and gas just beneath the ground surface. And Yellowstone is also in a region that is being stretched and pulled apart, according to USGS. If you see the video before this one having to do with the California earthquakes in the summer, major quake in the summer, uh, the geologist says, yes, most probably because it could happen because of the fact that the 
area of Napa Valley, for example, where they had the major quake in uh, 2014, uh, uses a lot of the groundwater, and, the, and the, the groundwater deflates. It sinks. The ground sinks, and it rises again in the winter, and all that movement back and forth. In the summer, it cracks. In the winter, it fills, and that's not good. And, of course, that, that, that change in the, in the ground and deforming can cause a, an earthquake. Um, yeah, so Yellowstone is also in a region that is being stretched and pulled apart, which means that that, that alone uh, can trigger an earthquake. As a result, small quakes are the norm in Yellowstone, which is typically hit by anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 quakes per year, according to the National Park Service. The biggest quake on record there was a magnitude 7.3 at Hebgen Lake, that was the quake of Hebden, Hebden Lake in 1959, which uh, at that time, of course, there were a lot more visitors than there are today. Now, what does that mean? So does the new earthquake swarm mean that Yellowstone is at greater risk for the big one? Probably not. Scientists still don't know exactly how it swarms up the odds for major quakes. But a region seismic history can provide some clues, Pullen said. In the instance, the area which is near Norris Geyser Basin is usually extra swarmy, he said. This particular area, especially in the hotbed of swarm seismicity, and it has been for quite a while, Pullen told Life Science, and what's more, the biggest shaking recorded in its swarm topped out at magnitude 2.9, which is not particularly strong. In contrast, the swarm last summer had quakes as strong as 4.4 magnitude, according to the USGS. The new swarm is not quite business as usual, but it's close, he added, and it may be uh, a response to the decades-old seismic activity. One of the potential explanations for why this area is so swarmy is that the whole crust in the area is still adjusting to the big earthquake that happened back in 1959. As you remember, one of the uh, previous videos, I think it was two, one, two before this one, having to do with the tectonic plates, uh, the quake under Japan, um, and the carbon, the fact that the, the quakes eat the carbon, and it's good for the earth because it uh, gets rid of the garbage and carbon, carbon um, tons of carbon every time we have an earthquake. Uh, Okay, so at that point they said that because of the earthquake of uh, the Japan earthquake 9.1 of 2011, we will be having earthquakes there for decades to come. So obviously this is the 1959 earthquake is for decades to come. And the big one, is it possible? That said, the large earthquake is an underappreciated risk at Yellowstone. Poland said, aside from the 1959 quake, a magnitude 6.1 quake did strike Yellowstone region in 1975, according to the University of Utah seismograph stations. So, people tend to focus on the possibility of a huge eruption, which is vanishingly small, but a magnitude 7 earthquake could happen comparably more often, Poland said. When they do happen, they're going to shake the region pretty severely, so people should be prepared for that, a seven quake. If the Yellowstone supervolcano were to blow, and if the eruption resembled the big ones that occurred hundreds or, th or thousands of years ago, the resulting far-flung ash spewing out could devastate the United States, not only the United States, but the whole of the Northern Hemisphere. So I'll leave a link below for you for this on Live Science. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel.
Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.